Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of CBSC Multiple Choice Questions, we're going to be looking at the thir- a type of question that can be asked in the CBSC's revised exams. So in the CBSC circular, it is said that for the first paper, questions would be asked in three ways. There, ha- there are fact-based multiple choice questions, case study-based multiple choice questions, and assertion and reason. So today we're going to be looking at one case study, which was asked in the previous sample papers, and we're going to be looking at how we can solve them, solve the questions in that case study. So, first of all, in these kinds of questions, you'll have to read out a particular text. So we have to read the following, answer any four questions from one to five given below. So the questions follow this slide, and contrary to the instruction given, we're going to solve all five questions so that you can get maximum benefit out of it. So let's start. Ecological indicators. The presence of dragonflies can reveal changes in the water ecosystems more quickly than studying other plants, or animals, or plants. In fact, from the nymph to the adult stage, the dragonfly has a significant positive ecological impact. Dragonfly eggs are laid or hatched and hatched in or near water, so their lives impact both water and land ecosystems. Once hatched, dragonfly nymphs can breathe underwater, which enables them to eat mosquito larvae, other aquatic insects and worms, and even small aquatic vertebrates like tadpoles and small fish, and in the air. Adult dragonflies capture and eat adult mosquitoes. Community-wide mosquito control programs that spray insecticides to kill adult mosquitoes also kill dragonflies. So, now let's look at our first question. The approach to biological control includes import and release of an insect pest to a new area to provide hosts for natural enemies, import and release of natural enemies from the native home of an alien insect pest that has invaded a new area, preservation of natural enemies that are already established in an area, use of insecticides to reduce alien insect pests to establish a new equilibrium position. So, which of these options are correct? If you look at options A and B, it says import and release of an insect pest to a new area to provide hosts for natural enemies, So both of these sentences contain the words import and release. So usually we import or release organisms when we have a particular ecological problem. So therefore, options A and B are incorrect because they're not the approach to biological control. In biological control, we use the local species in order to control a situation. Now what about option D? use of insecticides. Well, insecticides are chemicals, so therefore it's not biological control that is mentioned in option D. That's chemical control, so option D is also incorrect. The correct option is option C, preservation of natural enemies, predators and parasitoids that are already established in in an area. For example, if you have mosquitoes in a particular lake, you will preserve dragonflies, which are the natural predators, and use them to eradicate mosquitoes. Now, let's look at the next question. Two diseases diseases less likely to occur in a region with plenty of dragonflies are yellow fever, amemic dysentery, malaria, yellow fever, anthrax, typhoid, cholera, and typhoid. So you can easily solve this question by looking at the question itself. It says a region with plenty of dragonflies. What happens if you have plenty of dragonflies. There will be less mosquitoes. And what happens when you have less mosquitoes? You will have less mosquito-borne disease cases. So therefore, the correct option here would be option B, malaria and yellow fever. Both malaria and yellow fever are ha- both use mosquitoes as vectors. So Option B is the correct option. Option A is incorrect because amoebic dysentery has amoeba as its vector, and then option C and D are, they travel by via media such as air, water, 
and soil, they do not require biological vectors, anthrax, typhoid, and cholera. So the correct option is option B, malaria and yellow fever. So both malaria and yellow fever are requiring mosquitoes as biological vectors. If you have a lot of dragonflies in that area, then there's less mosquitoes, so these two diseases are less likely to occur. They are directly dependent on the amount of mosquitoes present. Next question. Dragonflies indicate positive ecological impact. As the presence of dragonflies indicates polluted water, this option is incorrect. Dragonflies do not cause any harm to beneficial species. Well, we know that mosquitoes aren't the only uh, insects that dragonflies consume. They consume other uh, insects too, and some of them may be beneficial. So option D is incorrect. Now, what about option B? Dragonfly nymphs selectively eat mosquito larvae. Now, the thing about this option is that the statement here is true, but still we consider this option to be false. Now, if we were to select option B as true, then we would be negating the truth of option C. So in option C, they, it says they help to decrease the probability of diseases spread by vectors. So this is done during both the nymph stage and the adult stage, so therefore um, the correct option would be C. If you were to pick B, then it says that only nymphs eat larvae. It would negate the fact that the adults would eat mosquitoes as well. So uh, while option B is a true statement, the most appropriate option here is option C because the positive ecological impact is the probability of diseases spread by vectors being reduced. That's the ecological impact we're looking for. Let's look at another question. The most effective stages in the life cycle of dragonfly that eradicate mosquitoes are larvae and adult, caterpillar and adult, nymph and adult, pupa and adult. So in this particular question, we can eradicate option B because the baby stages of a dragonfly are called nymph while caterpillar is used for butterfly, so option B is incorrect. Option D, pupa and adult, is also incorrect because in the pupa stage, the organism which is inside the pupa is inactive. Now what about option A, larvae and adult? Well, larvae are usually referred for mosquitoes, so it's complete, so the statement becomes nonsensically that not mosquito larvae are effective in eradicating mosquitoes, which is incorrect. The correct option is option C, nymph, and adult. And those are the two stages that were mentioned in the text that we read. Now, let's look at the final question of this episode. This question is an assertion reason question. Releasing dragonflies in areas where there's an outbreak of malarial diseases can be an environment-friendly method of control. The reason being that dragonflies are dominant species and will not allow mosquitoes to reproduce. So as we know, this is an assertion reason question, so therefore we have to first find out whether both the statements are true. Let's look at the assertion. The assertion says, releasing dragonflies in areas where there's an outbreak of malaria can be environment friendly. Well, yes, and that's what is meant by biological control. So, therefore, the assertion is a true statement. This means that option D is incorrect. Now, let's look at the reason. Dragonflies are dominant species and will not allow mosquitoes to reproduce. This statement is false. The reason being that dragonflies, they only eat mosquitoes. So, they eat the mosquitoes larvae and they also eat mosquitoes as their adults but the reproduction still occurs. There still are mosquitoes in a dragonfly infested area. So therefore, the reason here is false. So the reason here is a false statement, so therefore, the correct option is option C, assertion is true, but reason is false. This means that options A and B are incorrect because for both of those options to be correct, the assertion and reason have to be true statements. The correct option for this question is option C, assertion is true, but reason is false. 
Now, that concludes this episode of CBSC MCQs. If you want to learn more about these questions, then you can subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. We've already created some other videos regarding um, the MCQs that can be asked in CBSC exams, so you can get those by clicking the link for the playlist in the description box down below. And also, if you want to receive the latest updates from our channel, then please hit the notifications icon again present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.